welcome, welcome to the Miracle Christian Center International Church and Ministries. My name's Keith McLeod. I'm the bishop of this ministry by the grace of God. We want to welcome all our viewers and our friends that are watching us week on week. Thank you for being so faithful in, in watching us and praying for us. Thank you for all the things that you do. Uh, today is a very interesting subject. I'm going to be talking about under our more excellent way theme because that's the purpose of these programs. Uh, we're going to look at the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus. And this is entitled the progressive name of Jesus. Uh, it's very interesting subject for me because I found this really worked. And so the Bible says there is no other name given amongst men whereby we can be saved. And so this is very, very important indeed. Uh, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 20, there is a scripture there that describes how Jesus Christ took his disciples into a high mountain. It was a, a place called Caesarea Philippi. And many people do not realize that in Caesarea Philippi, there was a shrine there to the god of nature, the god Pan. Pan was a, a god, a deity in the demonic world that was half beast and half human being. And so the Lord went up into that region and sat his disciples in a circle and he asked them, who do men say that I am? He brought them to a place of deity within the spirit world and he asked them, who do you think I am? Who am I? And the Bible says that they responded in various ways. Some said, Lord, you are Jeremiah come back. Some say that you are Elijah that has come back, the great prophet. But he said, but who do you say I am? And the Bible says that uh, Peter, 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 who's a very strange gentleman, who would normally speak before his brain was engaged, and get himself in trouble. For once, he heard something special. And he jumped up in the midst of the, the, the group and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then the Lord responded, said, you are Peter. Upon this rock, I will build my church. He said, blessed art thou Simon Bar-Jonah. And he said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In the book of Luke, we find there's another scripture, and rather in John 14, uh, there's another scripture there where Jesus speaks to the disciples two, three years on. He's getting ready to give the supreme sacrifice and die on the cross for the souls of men. And at this particular time, the Lord speaks to them and he prophesied and he said, I have to go away. Greater works than these you will do because I am going to my Father. And so today I'm asking a question because I'm minding of an experience I had years ago. I was in the country of the USA. I was in Los Angeles. I was a young preacher, uh, just 29 years of age, and I was helping out putting the chairs away. Uh, and it's good to be a preacher, but help out and still serve. There was a massive crusade. That it was, I was only a visitor and helping out. Uh, there was 10,000 people there on that particular day. It was absolutely wonderful. And you know, there I was at the end of the service, and there was a group of people standing around the man trying to cast the demon out of him. It was very much like uh, the story when Jesus went on the mountain and he came down 
and his disciples were trying to cast a demon out of a little boy that was possessed. Do you remember that story in the Bible? And so in the midst of all of this, Jesus showed me something. And whilst I was there in that auditorium, I saw the people shouting and pointing their finger at a gentleman. And at that meeting, there were Korean people there, Spanish-speaking, Latino, Hispanic people, and, you know, people that speak English. But all, you know, the name Jesus is universal, and they were all speaking and saying, come out in the name of Jesus, come out. We cast out, we cast you demon out. And all these words were being said. And I, I was far on the other side, but it was quite a commotion. And somebody recognised me from England that I was over there, and they, saw, they said, oh, there's Pastor Keith over there. Let's get him to come and help us to get this man free. So I walked over, and I was quite reluctant because I didn't want to really get too involved. But the compassion, the Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion. And I felt the sorrow for this man as you see the contortions on his face and the demonic powers holding him. He was Hispanic. And I closed my eyes, I came near, and I told everyone to stop what they were doing. Because you see, when we're just there saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' name, come out. Jesus' name, be healed. And nothing or little is happening. It actually means we don't understand the name of Jesus. It actually means we don't really know what we're doing. So when I, I came into that situation, I closed my eyes, I quieted everybody down because they respected me as a pastor, as a reverend. So they all quietened down. I said, look, let's just be quiet. Let's wait on God. And as I closed my eyes, the Holy Spirit said to me, this man has done something naughty, done something bad last night. And I knew, the Lord told me that this man had committed fornication. That means he slept with somebody, had sexual sins with somebody the night before. Uh, I asked them what happened to him. I opened my eyes, I asked them what happened to him. They said, he, when the prayers were made by the evangelist for healing and miracles, he put his hand on a little child. And when he put his hand on the little child, the demon of dumbness, the child was deaf and dumb. When he put his hand on the child, the demon left the child, the child was free, the demon jumped on him and entered him, possessed him and made him dumb. That's why they were trying to set him free. But you see, repentance is very important. When a Christian, and he was a Christian, and the point was when he did that and sinned and think he could just go and lay hands on someone, on a demon, then we're, we're playing games here. So the, he went through this terrible experience. And so I, I asked someone to speak in Spanish and they spoke in Spanish to him and I had him in his heart to accept the Lord again, ask forgiveness. I said, and I said, you committed fornication with a woman. They said in Spanish and he nodded. I said, the Lord loves you but ask God's forgiveness. So we got to the root of it. And then I said, one time, just once, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you unclean spirit of, of dumbness and deafness, leave. He spoke immediately. Now there's something in that. It doesn't have anything to do with Keith McLeod. It doesn't have anything to do with me uh, being a special one or anything like that. But I do believe it has something to do with understanding. The name of Jesus, when our Lord was born, was just an ordinary name. Jesus was a common name. Even today, the name Jesus is common in South America and amongst Latino people. They call their children Jesus, Jesus. It's a common name. And that's why the Bible tells us in Philippians that there is none other name given among men whereby they can be saved. It tells us that there is a name that is above every name, where every knee will bow to that name. You see? 
on the day of Pentecost, Jesus, Peter, the same Peter who got the revelation who Jesus was, he preached the first message. And he said these words, this same Jesus is both Lord and Christ. So something happened to Jesus, and the first thing for his progressional change, you know, if, if I can use those words, the first part of the Lord's name, how it was progressively changed, is the way how you and I need to change. Watch this. For the first 30 years, Jesus was never challenged by the devil. But what he did, he served. He served in his mother's house. He served his community. He served people. Service and ministry, that's the first part of ministry, is service. 30 years, quiet as a lamb. 30 years, just working as a carpenter. 12 years old, once a year going to Jerusalem to do the, you know, the feast stuff. Humble. No one talks about him. Unknown. But that's where it starts. After that, he's age 30, he gets the call. He, he, he always was obedient. And obedience is the key to progression. Obedience is the key to progressing the name of Jesus. And so what Jesus does, he now leaves home and he joins his cousin. His cousin is John the Baptist, one who has been anointed to turn the nation back to God. So the first thing in the Lord's progressive name was he found identification by association. He associated and became an agreement with whatever God was doing before through another man. So that's the key to progression. The Lord associates. So when John saw him, John says, I'm not worthy to undo your shoes. He says, one comes after me who's greater than me. His name is Jesus. And John handed Jesus, all his disciples, all of the ministry was handed to Jesus. So by association, watch this, service first, serving. By association, identification with a ministry that has got the power and the power to change things. After that, it comes into agreement with John. Amen. At the time of the Lord's baptism, watch what happens. The Lord was called all kinds of names. Now you may think he was just called Jesus. You've got to understand in that community, and even these days it can still be a problem when you don't know who your father or your mother is. You see, so he was brought up in that community with no one knowing who his father was because Joseph was not his real father. The old, uh, 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 so everyone wanted to know who is his father so they must have had a bad name that they gave to Jesus back then 2,000 years ago you can imagine it but the point he, he had to live above that so whatever people are calling you whatever people are accusing you of what people are putting you down for you and I are greater than that Gee, our Lord was greater against all the, the talk He's illegitimate. He's got names. We have names that begins with B for that. Jesus was called all those names. But I'm here to tell you something. It didn't change the fact who he was. He was the Son of God. He was the Word made flesh. He was the power of God on earth. But he didn't show it off. He just stayed humble. Amen. So he comes to this point. Now Jesus at his baptism, the Bible says the Holy Spirit, Spirit came upon him. What happened? What happened at that baptism? I asked the question so you can think. You know what happened at the baptism? When he went down in the water and came up, no one knew who the Lord's Father was. But guess what? The Father in heaven validated him and said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. So for the 30 years, no one really knew who the Lord's son was. 
but the voice came from heaven, which some heard, some did not hear, and validated him as his son. So Jesus definitely was the son of God. Hallelujah. And so now the Lord has these followers, disciples, apprentices, that he's now going to train to be the builders of his secret weapon called the church in the future. He now asked them, who am I? And it was a, they were muddled, but Peter got the revelation. Hidden voice spoke to his spirit and he responded. And he said, I am, you are the Christ. The Christ means the anointed one. The son, now, when did the Lord become the Christ? He became the anointed one at his baptism. When he came out of the water, and the Bible says, the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. In the book of Luke, said it came down in bodily shape, lighted on him. And at that moment, the Bible says that the Lord was driven of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested, tested and assaulted by the devil. And the Bible says after 40 days, Luke 4 verse 14 tells us that Jesus came out in the power of the Spirit. So now he is the Christ, the anointed one. The Bible says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went around doing all, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For this purpose was Jesus coming to the world. And so Jesus is the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. After the cross, Jesus goes to the cross and what happens there? Jesus is buried. His spirit goes into hell. He takes back the keys of hell and death. He brings the resurrection force into the world. The Bible says if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, it will quicken, make alive your mortal body. Now people are leaving that until the second coming of Christ and when we all go into rapture or the end of the world based on what your beliefs might be. But that's not what the Lord is really saying. He's saying what raised him from the dead is now is that which quickens us and lives inside of us. Amen. And this is the point here that the Lord is trying to teach us something about his name. So then let's get to the point, let's get to the cruncher. What does the name of Jesus really mean? What does it mean when we do something for the Lord in his name? So for most people, they see God like this, they see Jesus like this, that when they pray, he's over there somewhere and we're calling on him to do something. That's true. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, we need to be aware that he indwells us. Amen. Now, if I gave you an authority letter in my name to go and collect something for me in a certain place, and I gave you all the powers of attorney, documents, legal and so on, to collect a million pounds from a certain person in a certain place. They're looking for my signature, they're looking for the powers of attorney by law, by a solicitor or by a courtroom that has stamped the document that says, I have given you authority. Now, it would be silly of you to go there and start talking like this. Hello, sir, hello, madam. I've come in the name of Keith McLeod uh, to collect something for Keith McLeod. And in the name of Keith McLeod, uh, I would like to have this. Uh, please, in the name of Bishop McLeod, can I receive this now? And we're talking that jibber jabber to the people at the desk. They will think that, well, you don't know what you're talking about. What they want is the letter. All they want is the paperwork that's in your hands. And so the devil knows that if we're trying to cast him out and we're just coming with jibber jabber and we're just saying 
in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. And the devil knows that he ain't moving because we don't know what we're doing. And secondly, I don't say that to be critical, but the point is we need to have the true answer. The answer is this. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he destroyed him. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, the Lord destroyed him who had the power of death. And the Lord came up when he was risen. He said, all power is given unto me. Then he turned to the disciples. He says, I give you this same power that raised me from the dead. Now, the point is this. When we receive Jesus in our lives, we did not, and don't get confused, and this is not sacrilegious and it's not twisting doctrine, we did not receive Jesus that was preaching for three and a half years in Galilee. That's not the power that we receive. We receive the power. He, you see, the Jesus would not send the Holy Ghost power until he got the keys from the devil, until he destroyed him in hell. And so what has happened is the Lord transferred the keys to us. And he told Peter, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. So I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom and not just to us, but in Matthew 18, the Lord repeated the statement to the 12. And he says, listen, whatever you bind on earth, the law of the church will be, whatever you say is lawful and unlawful, so shall it be in heaven. See, and this is what we've got to understand. Even more importantly, that that prayer is saying whatever the law is in heaven, we have the right to bring that law here on earth. And so when you suddenly realize it's all about status, when you realize, you and I realize who we are, yeah, ask any of the royal family. They could put on a pair of jeans. They could put on some rugged clothes and play rugby and do things, but in their head, their status is they are the royal family. Now, the Bible says we are a royal priesthood. We are royalty. So you see, now, when you face the devil, you are, it's not so much Jesus coming down to deal with the devil because you, we are using, uh, forgive me for the phrase, like we're almost using a magic name to Jesus, Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name, Jesus, Jesus. It isn't that. What it's about is that Jesus indwells you. And so when, because he indwells you, now you are speaking in his place. You are his representative. Now, so the point is, when I gave the, in the, the analogy I gave you, when I give the envelope to this person to collect the money from me, I'm not physically there. But my statement, what is written of me, is in the document. When they open it, they see it comes directly from me and they will deliver the million pounds to me. It's the same with us who operate in Jesus' name. When we say in the name of Jesus, it doesn't mean that we are repeating his name. It means that we are coming in his name with the documentation in our hand. So what will happen is, like I told you, the, the, the case in the uh, US, in Los Angeles, the demon in the man knew that I was not coming to repeat the name of Jesus. He knew that I was coming with Jesus in me to destroy him, to destroy the demon. So, uh, so people think it's if you say, come out or be healed, you have to say Jesus' name. You don't have to repeat the phrase every second. Just say it once. After that, you say, come out. Amen? That's why the church in the early days had so much power. They understood this principle. And so I'm sharing that today, that we have come in the Lord's place. You are his representative. It takes a while to get a hold and understand that. And that makes the difference when the demon sees you or the spirit for the illness or the sickness sees you coming, they know immediately that you know who you are. A person may not know who you are, but a demon will. The devil's kingdom knows who you are. Amen? We may give accolades to ourselves and call ourselves and all different titles, but the demons know who we are. It's written. It says, Paul I know. G it says, Jesus, I, Paul, I know. P 
Peter I know, John I know, Jesus I know. But who are you? See, it's about identification, it's about association, it's about coming into agreement. And most importantly, that I am the Lord's representative. Jesus is not going to physically come down and do one miracle physically. He's coming to his body. It's you and I. And every man and woman is a minister who can pray. You can pray for the sick and they shall recover. You will lay your hands on the sick. They will recover. In Jesus' name, I decree recovery as you hear in these closing remarks as I'm speaking right now. Put your hand as I'm under the anointing. I can feel the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit. Just right now, stretch your hand and believe with me. We're going to speak in the name of Jesus. I've come in the Lord's representation. I've come with his anointing. So when I speak in Jesus' name, that the condition will dry up. That force, that growth in your body will dry up. Just stretch your hands. In Jesus' name, Father, I step into the spirit world and I declare every sickness, disease, cancer dry up, growth dry up, disappear, pains in the body, sugar diabetes, leave these people's bodies in the name of Jesus. We have come in the authority of the progressive name of Jesus. Our Lord is both Lord and Christ. Hallelujah. And you see, the Lord's name is progressing even into eternity. The Bible says when the Lord returns, he's coming on a white horse. And when he comes on that white horse, the Bible says that upon his thigh will be written a name that no one can know. Then that name, it will be the greatest name revelation of his name still to come. Today, I decree you healed in Jesus' name. I decree every demon gone from you in Jesus' name. I decree your body whole in Jesus' name. Receive the power of your healing. Receive deliverance from every demonic force in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, my time is gone. You can see we get fired up here. We, this is the church of the living God and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A more excellent way, amen.